What's up everyone, it's Jeremy here with Majors Academy Dog Training and I want to show you guys uh, Pablo's progression, socialization progression. And the first thing that we always do is bring a dog out on leash. Uh, usually the second or third day they've been here. Those are for mostly for aggressive dogs. Uh, but this is a five month old fearful, uh, fear aggressive puppy that was sent to us from Fetch Wisconsin Rescue and I want to show you guys just how step by step uh, from start to finish how we go from being a dog off leash I mean on leash and not trusting him to being off leash and fully trusting him so the first thing that uh, is very important here is that you bring your dog out on leash and you have dogs that respect your space so whether you need uh, if you need anything in your hand a pet convincer uh, a dressage whip something to separate uh, your dogs from <clears throat> from the dog that you're working is very paramount with a dog that's fearful of other dogs okay so what you want to do is walk around let them smell let them sniff and that and the goal here uh, on session one is to get the dog to uh, want to interact with our dogs and actually have him interact or uh, initiate the interaction so as you'll see, I just got closer to the camera. I want Pablo here, the, guy, the dog with, in the brown on leash, to willingly go up to my dogs when he's ready. And we're just gonna take our time with that. So I wanna do a play-by-play -play analysis. I just shooed my dog away because Pablo's hackles are up, if you can see it a little bit, and he's really not, I could read that he's really not wanting my dogs to be in his face. So, I kind of shooed my dog away and um, just kind of waiting till Pablo this is again this is the first interaction this is the first time he's seeing my dog so I'm kind of just wanting Pablo to uh, relax you know decompress and when he's ready uh, to go up to my dogs because when you're dealing with a puppy it's going to be it, you're going to move on pretty quickly because of the play drive that puppies possess almost all puppies want to play they want to play they want to play uh, but some puppies just need a little bit more time in the initial to uh, to warm up but once they warm up they are fully wide open and you'll see that with Pablo here So again, we're just letting him sniff around and getting familiar with everything. <clears throat> I just had to spray my dog away because he really wasn't listening uh, to me the way I wanted to. He really wants to interact with Pablo, but again, I want Pablo to do it, do the initiating. So now as you can see his tail's going up. He may be feeling a little bit better here. So we're gonna move on and see if we can get him to be a little bit more brave towards the dogs. And he's doing he's pulling me towards the dogs now. Uh, I'm just simply following him. It's important that whenever he stops, you stop. You don't want to force the interaction. So my dogs, you, if you can 
see them. My dogs are way on the back wall there. They're just lying down. So Mama decided to come out. So watch this body language <clears throat> of Pablo in this first interaction. Look at the tail position. That's moderately comfortable there. But then I keep it brief. I keep that first, because that first interaction is a tense moment. You know, dogs are saying, who are you, who are you? And it can be a little tense. So I always keep it very brief. Now he want, now look, but now he's avoiding the frontal sort of interaction. He was okay sniffing the butt, but soon as mom, soon as mama, and him came to face to face, he didn't really want that. As you could see, when he see he's feeling a little insecure because he jumped on me. That is the sign of insecurity, by the way. But watch him face to face. Look at him. Try, look, he avoids the face to face. See that? And mama is giving him uh, some calming signals. Some 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 okay signals with her low tail wagging position. Look at that, it's very inviting. So mama comes up, he's unsure, and you see he kind of jerked his head because he didn't want that pressure. So the other ability you want to have is be able to take your dog's pressure off the dog when uh, you see fit. I can tell mama to go away, back off, back up, and it really, really helps in those tense moments. Keep them brief. Keep them uh, often and keep them brief. Keep those interactions brief. Look at Still ain't ready for it. That's okay. So he, he walked towards this way, towards the house. I can also make my dog sit and allow the dog to sniff my dog while they're in a sitting or down position. And I, I, I think this may be a really uh, good thing to the dog that's fearful because sitting position, downing position is not a threatening position, not a very threatening position. So sometimes I allow, I make my dog sit or down and then I'll have that first interaction uh, doing that and I've had very good success but if you follow these these steps that I'm going to take you through in this video if you uh, really pay attention and take your time you will not have dog fights uh, the other the, an, another big factor of not having dog fights is not having things in the yard that they could fight over bones toys, food, treats, <clears throat> none of that. So if this is it for the day too, uh, there may be one more interaction, but this may be it for today, and I and I'm okay. Uh, actually, this is the first uh, session, so there's a second session um, later on today with another dog, a different dog, a more rambunctious dog. We add to the group because I want him, I want Pablo to get comfortable with a more assertive type of dog. Whereas my dogs now, they're older, they're not really 
their play their play drive has not has kind of dwindled uh, because they're older. But with my younger dog, his play drive is very high, and Pablo needs to be able to see that situation and be advocated for in that regard as well. So he willingly went up to Tobias there, and I told Tobias to sit. Tobias decided to walk away, and I told him to lie down again. And I'll try and have Pablo come up. And at this point, I think Tobias is feeling the residuals of the pet convincer that I uh, interacted with previous to this. So, anyway, this is Pablo going up to T Pain, lying down. And that's how close he got. He didn't even want to get that close. Uh, his comfort level is what it is right now. And that's okay. I'm not going to force him. I'm not going to talk to him. I'm just going to allow him to do what he wants. Unless he does something uh, that is negative, I'm not going to do much at all. Okay, session number two. <clears throat> He's already a different dog, you can tell. Very much so uh, willing to initiate following my dogs. Tails wagging. Spirits are high. You can tell he's much more interested in what my dogs are doing here. But it's just my two. So I did not add the, the third dog just quite yet. I think I added the third dog in the third session. But see, a willing, a nice and willing butt sniff there. And he's still a little uncomfortable with my dogs interacting or trying to get their sniff in. But I take him away. And he's really willing to now. Looks like he's playing, wants to play there. <clears throat> so I take him away. And he's much more comfortable interacting with Mama. So now Tobias comes in. And I back my dogs away. Because two dogs were kind of enough. And I invited T-Pain back in. And I just dropped the leash. <clears throat> now again, it's very important in this situation to be able to have the ability to call your dogs off of the dog uh, when you feel the dog is sort of uh, uh, feeling the pressure of the other dogs. He's still kind of uncomfortable, right? Not quite sure, but wants to play, but not quite sure yet. Tail is down, 
Not tucked completely, but down. Up. Oh, there's a little bit of wag. It's very important and very powerful if you can take your dog's pressure off because a lot of dogs also want to take advantage of a dog like this and can just set this dog back as far as uh, coming out of that fearful mindset when it comes to dogs. Very important to stay watching the dogs at all times until they're really, really comfortable with each other. But uh, because this is a puppy, we're moving a lot quicker than if it was an adult dog. And you want to keep the leash dragging, you do, because if your dog, if this dog, Pablo, decides to go after my dog, I can easily just grab Pablo and break up the fight. You also want to give that time up that puppy uh, break every now and then <clears throat> to be able to learn how to control his impulses because a puppy once they're relaxed they just want to play 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 get in dogs face bombard other dogs and sometimes they need a mental break so I sometimes can grab the leash and just walk around with them in the yard or just do nothing and they end up laying down and taking a mental break this is pretty important as well Again, this is the second session. Okay, here we go with the third session. I have half my third dog, my rambunctious dog, Mac, out, and you can see Pablo is full of steam and ready to go. He just wants to play. This is the first time of him meeting Mac, and you can see the difference of him meeting my first dogs and then meeting Mac. So uh, it may just have taken uh, some of that uh, initial time to get him comfortable with a strange dog because he willingly put up with Mac and went right up to him so that's why I took off the leash now uh, Mac will be a little bit more difficult to take the pressure off of him uh, so I will do so if I see necessary but Mac is going to because of his play drive is going to uh, want to play and add a lot of pressure to him But if he can deal with the pressure of Mac, and they're playing, they're playing, it seems kind of fine. Uh, but if he can deal with Mac's sort of playful pressure, then he can deal with a lot of different dogs. So 
I just called Mac off. Just to back off a little bit. Just put Machina down because his pressure was getting overwhelming. So uh, another little tip with socializing dogs is that uh, when you're dealing with a newer dog, you want to always be on your feet and you always want to be around them. Uh, just as long as you get, you know, as they get more comfortable, then you can wean off how close you have to be. Uh, but in the beginning. Uh, you definitely want to be close so that uh, your voice and your body pressure can intervene at a moment's notice. like he's just having a blast now. So I know this isn't the best camera angle, but that little brown thing is Pablo just doing laps. Uh, right now, feeling pretty confident because he's so outgoing that uh, you know he can meet strange dogs and stay as comfortable as he was the third session with my dogs. So. Now, the next session, we are going to introduce him to uh, our two boarding trains, which is a little dog, female, and another pit bull, female. And you'll see how awesome he does with them. So this next session, I'm going to bring Bruno or Pablo out all off leash with my dogs. Uh, just going to ask them to wait at the door before I let them out. And wanted to see how just excited and happy he was to be out. was being a little overbearing there. Which is 
see his, his play style. He just kind of jumps from dog to dog. Tails up, wagging, he's smiling, glad to be out here. So you'll see throughout this video, I wanted to keep it as raw as possible, but uh, I've noticed that the GoPro does have glitches. So you'll see Bruno in one spot and then the next sec second you'll see him all the way up near the house. And that isn't anything I've done. It is simply GoPro, a, Go a GoPro glitch. So just wanted to make sure you guys know that this is all raw, unedited. You can see every time that I come out of the door. Uh, and you can see every time that I turn the camera off. This is unedited, raw. Uh, footage I wanted to show you guys um, what it looks like at the least you guys can this is a, a structured way to introduce a new dog to your pack always start on leash always start in control of your dog and the other dogs around you for long enough so that you can see comfort before you take the next step. See that? There was a glitch. Uh, had nothing to do with that. So this time he's going to meet the white dog Maggie, and he's also going to meet Ginger for the first time. And it seems like it just took that first day of breaking the ice because it's almost as if now, no matter what dog is there, he shows that same exuberance as the third and even just the second session. So, We really like the energy he's showing us. So this is the first time he meets Maggie. Look at him. A bit more willing. That was another glitch. I apologize for that. He greets Maggie again.
it kind of just bounces from dog to dog. That's what it does all day. So, as you can see, sorry, there's another little glitch, going on. but um, as you can see, he's just being a puppy, uh, really letting himself show, uh, being goofy, running around, quite comfortable with everything. Your success when socializing a fearful dog, or even a new dog, is how much attention you're going to pay uh, in the beginning. And don't be afraid to take your time. If it's not comfortable, then take another step forward until you are comfortable. Because you just want to make sure that um, you create calmness before you take that next step. So I think this is it.